Learning how to use the EQ tools in DaVinci Resolve can take your audio quality to the next level and make your video sound even more professional and pleasing. To start to make your audio sound better, come down to the Fairlight workspace here and click on it. You can see now we've got the audio portion that we can work with. On the right hand side here, we have the mixer section. If you don't see that, you can come up to the top here and toggle the mixer on and off with this button. And for each audio track that you've got in your timeline, you'll get a channel in the mixer. For example, if I go and right click and delete all of the empty tracks, notice now we only get a couple of tracks. Don't worry about this bus one. That's basically the master sound output that gets encoded into the video file. We're just gonna work with this audio one track. Don't worry about these other things going on in this track at the minute. We're going to focus in this video on this EQ section. If you double click on this EQ for the audio one track, it will bring up the equalizer. You could try one of the presets, but nine times out of 10, you're going to get better results by doing this yourself. Click on all of these red buttons here, and that gives us a blank slate to work with. So this window here represents the low frequency sounds all the way up to very high frequency sounds. And what an EQ or equalizer does, it allows us to raise or lower specific frequencies in the audio. In the built-in equalizer here in DaVinci Resolve, we can make six different adjustments. We do that by turning on or off these six sections. I'm gonna start here with band one. By default, this is going to let us reduce the lower frequency sounds. I'm just going to play this back, and as it's playing back, I'm going to change the frequency here. The frequency allows you to specify what parts of the audio will get affected. Currently, if we look at this dropdown, it's set to this shape here. This shape allows us to get rid of frequencies below a certain frequency. This is sometimes called a low cut or high pass filter. If we move it this way, we're only going to affect frequencies less than 30 hertz. And if we bring it up this way, we're going to reduce the volume of frequencies less than 399 hertz. Just take a listen to this as I change it. How to use the EQ tools in DaVinci Resolve can take your audio quality to the next level and make your video sound even more professional and pleasing. So the first step in getting good audio is to reduce all of the frequencies that you don't actually want and that don't actually add to the quality of the audio. The best way to set this is to play it back like I just did and then adjust the frequency. So we're going to start off by reducing all of the frequencies below about 90 hertz. You can see this shape here tells us that as the frequency gets lower, the volume reduction gets higher. The zero line here represents zero reduction in frequency volume or zero increase in frequency volume. Plus 20 means we're increasing that volume by 20 and negative 20 means we're reducing the volume of that frequency by 20. So now we've reduced these lower frequencies that we don't want, which can kind of cause a bit of low level rumble. We can go and try and tweak the audio. This is a vocal track. The EQ tool in DaVinci. So we're going to try and improve the sound of that vocal track as best we can. We're going to do this by first turning on the second band, making sure we're using this shape. This shape allows us to increase or decrease a specific frequency by a specific width. To increase a frequency, you add a positive gain here, and to decrease a frequency in volume, you use a negative gain here. And you can see on this graph that it's going above and below that zero line. The Q factor here allows you to specify how shallow or steep the curve is. A very low Q factor creates this gentle rise and gentle fall, and a very high Q factor creates a sharp rise and a sharp fall. So if you only want to affect a smaller band of frequencies, you use a high Q factor, and if you want to affect a wider band of frequencies, you use a low Q factor. In this method I'm going to show you here, we're going to increase the Q factor to the maximum and increase the gain, not so much as it goes so loud as it distorts, but loud enough so we can hear the difference. What we're going to do here is play back the audio and move the frequency up and down until we start to hear a strange kind of tink, tink, tink or resonating sound. This will give us an indication that we should probably cut those frequencies to improve the quality. So let's go back to the start. Just move this out of the way. I'm going to hit I to set an in point, come to the end here and hit O on the keyboard to set an out point. Make sure this button is turned on and then hit Alt and slash to start looping playback. When this playback is looping, I'm going to be listening to it and moving this frequency up and down until I hear that resonating or that pink, pink, pink sound. 
Learning how to use the EQ tools in DaVinci Resolve can take your audio quality to the next level and make your video sound even more professional and pleasing. So about 132 hertz, we're starting to get a bit of resonance. Being able to hear this kind of resonance will take a bit of practice, so just stick with it. So now we've found this frequency that's not sounding so good when we amplify it, we can actually change the gain setting here and reduce that frequency in the overall output. Normally, you're not going to want to go right down to the bottom here. You're going to want to try and set as gentle as possible to achieve the desired effect. So let's say about the negative six gain. You can then turn on band three, Make sure we've got this shape selected, turn up the Q factor to maximum and turn up the gain enough so we're going to be able to hear the difference. I'm going to start loop playback again and we'll try and find the next bit of resonant sound. How to use the EQ tools in DaVinci Resolve can take your audio quality to the next level and make your video sound even more professional and pleasing how to use the EQ tools in DaVinci Resolve can take your audio. If you find that you're overloading the output while you do this, feel free to turn down the gain a little bit and then keep searching. How to use the EQ tools in DaVinci Resolve can take your audio quality to the next level and make your video sound even more professional and pleasing. About 233 hertz, there's another bit of that resonance. Once again, we'll reduce the gain to try and get rid of some of that frequency. And then you can continue to do the same for band four and band five. Just as a quick tip, if you find you can't move within the range in these frequencies, you need to click these boxes here. The first box allows you to adjust the low frequencies. The next box are the medium low frequencies. Notice I can't move this outside of that range. Medium high frequencies and just the high frequencies. So once you've reduced some of those unwanted frequencies, you can turn on band six. And by default, this is going to give us what's called a low pass filter. This is basically the opposite of this end. You can adjust this frequency to reduce high frequency noise, or you can change this and choose this version, which is going to allow you to boost frequencies above a certain frequency. If we're working with vocals, we can often make them sound a little bit better by increasing the volume of frequencies above four kilohertz. To do this, set this value at 4K and then experiment with increasing the gain. If you go too high, let me just play this back. How to use the EQ tools in DaVinci Resolve can start to sound a bit unnatural and you can start to hear a lot of lip smacking noises and other unpleasant things. So you wanna keep this fairly low, probably only about two decibels. Let me play this back for you and disable and enable all of the equalization how to use the EQ tools in DaVinci Resolve can take your audio quality to the next level and make your video sound even more professional and pleasing. So I hope you can hear by following this simple approach, we've reduced some of that boominess and we've increased the overall clarity of the voice. If you're finding it difficult to hear the difference, it's really helpful to have a good pair of studio reference monitor speakers and also a good audio interface. I'll put details in the description of the exact setup I use, which allows me to hear the difference really well. To learn even more tips to make better sounding audio check out this playlist next i'm jason roberts don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in the next one